mind you set before thee, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, that will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God and forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. We are here in the prison corporate, in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thine everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Welcome to the annual parish meeting of St. Timothy's Episcopal Church. I thought it was best to give sort of my thoughts of the parish and the future of the parish immediately after the daily office and the daily Eucharist. Uh, this is the Eucharist on Thursday and the people of God have gathered together to celebrate, to proclaim His Word and to receive Him in the sacraments. And this weekly event that happens during the week, uh, Monday through Thursday, is the heartbeat of the parish. Not everyone can, can come, and, and that's okay, because the heartbeat, the beating of the heart, uh, nearly every single day carries the life, carries the blood, the spirituality, to every part of the body. So from the fingertips to the toes that are far away, life is carried to it by this constant and faithful offering of the Holy Sacrifice of our Lord to the Father. And I've been asked by a very faithful parishioner who's been a member of St. Timothy's since July of 1951. He's been a member of St. Timothy's for 61 years. He asks me nearly every single Sunday before the Eucharist when I'm going to share my vision of St. Timothy's with the parish. And I've taken this very seriously, and I really appreciate his request because it comes from someone who's been with this parish since the very, very beginning, since the very first year, and yet his only concern is of the future, of the days to come. And his request reminds me of what the prophet Joel said in describing the future outpouring of the Holy Spirit, when he said that in those days I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh, your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female slaves, in those days, I will pour out my spirit. So my prayer for us this day and all of our days is that we are attentive and we are asking the Holy Spirit to be upon us and within us. Because without the Holy Spirit moving and guiding us and communicating the will of God to us, we are lost. My vision for St. Timothy's is for this place to be the church. And by the church, I mean that vision that is articulated in the collet of the day that we've been praying this week on the second Sunday after the Epiphany. This beautiful prayer that sums up our identity and purpose. The, the collet begins like this. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world. Grant that thy people, illumined by thy word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. My vision for St. Timothy's is very simple, and we've summed this up on our communications and our bulletins, and we've said these words over and over again, adoration, formation, and transformation. My vision for this place is that it is primarily known as a place of worship, a place of the real adoration of the triune God revealed to us in the person of Jesus. My vision is that worship becomes so important to us. It is our core identity, as it should be. 
For what is the purpose of the church if we're not called to gather together and to celebrate this sacrifice of our Lord to the Father, to celebrate the Holy Eucharist every time we come together? We're, we're not just a civic organization that sings music and does works of uh, mercy and come together for fellowship. We do that, but we do that flowing out of the Holy Eucharist, flowing out of the Mass, which is why I think it's important that I share my thoughts of the vision of the church flowing out of the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. And what it means for us to be a place of worship means that we will ultimately be a place of pilgrimage. You know, there are two churches in my life that I think back in my spiritual geography that were important to me. One was in Abbeville, South Carolina, an Episcopal church that had a congregation of about 25 people, an old historic church that was open all the time. Nobody was ever inside, but during my lunch break, I would go to a pool hall called the Rough House, and I would order hot dogs and eat lunch, and then I would walk down the street off the square to this church and go inside and sit and breathe in the prayer. It was a place of pilgrimage for me. And then when I was in seminary, the Greek Orthodox Cathedral of the Annunciation also became a place of pilgrimage because on the inside, I was struck by the beauty of it. There was a 58-foot mosaic of Christ, the ruler of the universe, that no matter where you went in the church, you were under the gaze of Jesus. You were under Christ. And that was powerfully formative for me, knowing that wherever we go, no matter where we go, we're under Christ. He's with us, and He cares for us. My vision is that this place becomes a place of pilgrimage for all people, our own members, people who have never been here before on Sunday morning, but know that this is a place of prayer and sanctuary and a place of beauty. You know, we've done an awful good work in preparing for the sounds of this place. This church was designed for sound. We've done a good work in raising money and we're currently restoring the Hook and Hastings organ and Kristen Barnhart has done an amazing job with our voices so that our voices can match this powerful instrument. Our sounds are doing well. I think in 2013 it's time to really take a look at our beautiful nave and sanctuary and focus on it, to focus on the color and the shape and the beauty of this place. This church is an amazing canvas, but I think it's waiting for us to add some color to it. So in February, I've invited renowned liturgical artist Davis Damley from Philadelphia to come to St. Timothy's and to share with the vestry what he thinks could happen in this place, what he thinks this place could be as a place of beauty and of pilgrimage, so that the people of God are drawn here out of the ugliness of the world into the beauty of this foretaste of the heavenly sanctuary that is where our Lord is. My vision is also for this place to be something more than just a beautiful spot where people come. Because when they do come here and they do worship with us, what happens beyond that? If we can get people into the doors of St. Timothy's and offer them Jesus, what do we do to support them and nurture them? There's this, for lack of a better image, there's this movie that has always stuck with me. It came out 10 years ago called Finding Nemo, beautiful children's movie, where the characters are fish, and the main character lost his son, and he spends the entire movie desperately trying to find his son, and he, he discovers he's in Australia, so the only way he can get to his son, the fastest possible way, is to take this underwater current, this East Australian current, that once he is in it, takes him on this super underwater highway to his destination, to where his son is. And I love the image of the church, of the movement and identity of this place to be like a current. That when people come in seeking faith, seeking God, seeking community, seeking hope, when they come in here, we can offer them this current that takes them to a place, that takes them to the radiance of Christ's glory, as the colic says, that takes them to holiness. I know that scares us to say that our goal is holiness, but that is the goal that's been given to us. That is the command from Jesus. So in doing that, my vision for St. Timothy's is that we are a place of serious formation. If we're called to know, worship, and obey Jesus, 
We have to be serious about being formed in Him. So my vision is that the expectation of everyone who comes here and calls this place home will find themselves in a small group, in a formation community that will nurture them as they grow, but also hold them accountable that this is the expectation of the life of a Christian, to grow and to learn and to not remain stagnant. We cannot, as people of faith, remain stagnant. We have to be moving forward. So my vision is that we are a place that offers wonderful formation offerings, large and small, from inside and outside, but that we're serious about it and we're committed to it and that we're held accountable to it. Also, my vision for St. Timothy's, in terms of outreach and mission, is that we are a place where our outreach and mission is incarnational. And by that I mean that every act of outreach and mission is done person to person. My vision is that we no longer have a middle person or middle entity between the people of St. Timothy's and the people for whom we're called to serve, that we do it with them, hand to hand, heart to heart, and not outsourcing this responsibility to anyone else. For instance, if we are truly concerned about social injustice, we have to encounter this injustice ourselves in person. If we are concerned about homelessness in Winston-Salem, let's start by getting to know the people who live in Miller Park just a block away from this beloved parish. Let's get to know them. We've started a good work by supporting the Abraham Project, this, this movement that is designed around incarnational ministry, and we've done a good work by creating the relationships between this parish and the Diocese of Costa Rica and the Church of the Ascension, but we can continue to do more if we're really concerned about making our world a place that is transformed by the love of God, that we need to get to know the people God is calling us to serve. My vision also is for the people along this current to move toward being debt-free. I truly think that the materialism that has absolutely burdened our nation and our people is a major spiritual issue. We can't talk about budgets and we can't talk about stewardship and giving to the church honestly until we've addressed the major problem, until we address the fact that most Americans are absolutely saddled with insurmountable debt. As we move forward to this radiance of Christ's glory, this holiness, I think we need to be serious about advocating and creating means and support for our people to be free of debt. In this faith, we talk about freedom that exists in Christ, and part of that freedom means to be free to give and to serve so that we're not blinded by things that keep us from truly giving to the needs of others and giving to the glory of God. So my vision is the people of St. Timothy's are committed to living debt-free. And finally, my, my vision for this parish is that we are a place that is committed to nurturing, committed to being serious about and raising up leadership. You know, we already have in this parish five people in the official process for ordination in the Diocese of North Carolina. Two of our members are currently in seminary, Nick Meacham in New York City, and Andrew Heggie, who's currently at Wake Forest Divinity, who are studying and preparing to be priests, and we have others who are preparing and discerning the call to the diaconate. In the vestry, we are seriously having conversations about what it means to be a Christian leader. And the Abraham Project, again, is another opportunity to raise up a future generation of leaders in the church. I've been talking with diocesan leadership about grants that are available for churches like St. Timothy's to call a curate, a, a junior priest, an assistant priest, to be part of our identity and mission to raise up a future generation of leaders. So my, my vision for this church is that we have a curacy ministry where we, we call someone who was recently ordained, recently graduated from seminary, 
wet behind the ears and we bring them to this place where we have the gifts and resources and the disposition to train and to laugh and to make room for mistakes and we we let this person lead and teach and serve and offer the sacraments for two or three years and when that time is over we send them forth we send them forth to be rectors or missionaries or chaplains all across this country or even across the world and when they leave we call another curate to come to be with us and we start this ministry all over again my vision is that we are a place of adoration formation and transformation that we are a place that is rooted in the constant celebration of the Eucharist in the best possible way we can do it with the best music and the best liturgy and the best art and the best beauty that we can that we can create my vision for this place is that we are people who are serious about learning about our Lord and learning what it means to be a Christian and that we hold each other accountable with this expectation that we exercise maturity and that we bear the fruits of the Holy Spirit because we are seeking the fruits of the Holy Spirit. My vision is that we are a mature church full of mature Christians. My vision is that we take outreach and mission seriously and that we come to meet the people in our community and we love them, not in a condescending way, but in a, a loving, brotherly and sisterly way. My vision is that the people of this parish are free from slavery of debt and can live lives of freedom and give and serve to the glory of God. My vision is that we not only talk about leadership, we raise it up and we send it forth. I don't think this vision is unique or special or clever or creative. I really don't even think it's my vision. I think this is the vision of the church that is given to us, uh, solidified in our Book of Common Prayer, passed on from generation to generation. My vision is that we are faithful in being the church and discerning what it means to be the church and be serious about it. Will there be challenges in doing this? Absolutely. Will there be anxiety in doing this? Absolutely. But if we're faithful, God is faithful to us. I was going through some old files the other day. Files from the Vision 2000 committee that was established in the mid-90s to discern whether or not to build a new space of worship for St. Timothy's, and if so, what kind of space that would be. Basically, it was the committee that ultimately uh, created the movement to build this nave and sanctuary where I am in right now. And I was struck by a paragraph in one of the committee reports as one of the members was doing surveys and interviews with the people of St. Timothy's and the staff trying to see if this was a direction the Spirit was, was leading. And I was struck by the following paragraph where, where the author says this. It was noted that St. Timothy's has a history of being satisfied with the status quo. An extensive congregational interest and marketing will be required to expand our campus, along with a strong collaborative statement of priorities from vestry, rector, staff, and lay leadership, to go forward with vision for any future major building expansion will mean a definite change of pace and action for St. Timothy's Episcopal Church. I guess finally, my vision for St. Timothy's is that we're never satisfied.